Welcome to Daily Devotion with Ken Gurley. Devotions designed to inspire you on your daily walk with God. Here's your host, Ken Gurley. Hey, good morning. Welcome this Thursday morning. Thursday morning, April the 4th. Oh, it's my dad's birthday. He would have been, let's see. Oh, goodness. It, this is always a mystery with my dad. The big debate what year my dad was born. I, I think it's safe to say he would have been 94 today. 94. Miss you, Dad. We do. I had a wonderful, wonderful dad. This Thursday, April 4th, thank you for being a part of this. Darlene, Deborah, Kirk, happy that you're here. I, um, Wow, great service last night. Launch uh, North American Missions uh, at the Pearland Church and just what a great service. Informative, people wanting to start churches, plant churches everywhere. It's just, an, boy, it's great to rub shoulders with people like that. And um, great move of God, great information. And uh, looking forward to today, tomorrow at launch happy that you are here and um, what a great subject we have today when in doubt dance that's it when in doubt dance and you're not a good southerner unless you can stretch the word dance into at least two maybe three syllables dance you got you gotta you gotta work on that word you gotta chew it up in your mouth a little bit to get more than one syllable out of it but we southerners we can do that yes we can Yes, we can. Oh, you, you say right now. You just say right now. I I don't even know what you're talking about, dance. I'm in the Bible, folks. Hope, I'm in the Bible. That's it. Uh, we're in the high Himalayas of Scripture. The next to the last psalm. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Everybody believe that? And his praise in the congregation of the saints. Everybody love congregational singing? Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them praise him on the timbrel and the harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He'll beautify the meek with salvation. See, I got Bible. Suzanne, Lonnie, I got Bible. Let them praise the Lord in the dance. Let me tell you about let me tell you, Johnny, let me tell you about my wife and I's first trip to the Holy Land. We didn't hardly know anybody, but uh, we went out on the uh, Sea of Galilee, and our boat was our boat was kind of weepy. They were real weepy out on the Sea of Galilee. It was in the evening. The sun was going down. About that time, a party boat came by, and uh, it, it had Jewish men and women on there, and the Jewish men were in a circle, and they were dancing in a circle and the Jewish women were in a circle and they were dancing in a circle and uh, I don't know Gail Ted confessions good for the soul I was wishing that I was on the dancing boat rather than the weeping boat I just believe the Lord loves it when we dance it's in the 149th and the 150th Psalm we are commanded to praise the Lord in the dance the Oxford Dictionary said the word dance is romantic in origin. It comes from an old German word, danson, meaning to straw, to stretch out as a line of people moving together. It means to leap, to skip, to hop, to glide with measured step, with or without music. How's that one? With yourself or with somebody else? Yes. Sometimes you just got to praise the Lord in a dance. You've got to get in the ashes of Ziklag and kick up a little dust and say, I'm here. I'm still here. Enemy, I'm still vertical. You tried to lay me low, but I'm still standing. And not only am I standing, I am dancing. It's not surprising when the word dance has such great, great um, elastic meaning that it can be used of anything. It's applied to the movement of animals, to the movement of a field of flowers, to groves of trees, to swimming fish, to waves, to cloud. I guess you can say it like this. Anything that moves 
may dance and likely will dance at some time. I, I, I read, I, I read a book a years, a few years ago. It was a little book on leadership, and um, that little book, I, I, I will tell you this. Um, my little book, the footnotes were more interesting than the book itself. <laughs> I just loved reading the footnotes. I never loved reading the footnotes, but the footnotes were fascinating. And uh, in that. In the footnotes, I found out that dancing was a part of the most of the world's major religions. Stone Age cave paintings illustrate dancing. The whirling dervishes. Come on, Don. How often do you get to hear whirling dervishes? <laughs> you got to watch out for them whirling dervishes. In the Hindu temple dancing, you can see dancing and ancient Buddhist Shinto shrines, or Judaism's the Hasidim dance. Early in American Christianity, you know one of the forerunners of Pentecost in an early American Christianity, they were called the Shakers. They were an offshoot of the Quakers. They were called the Shakers because they did shake, that their worship services consisted largely of dancing, men with men, women with women, and Instances of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit were evidenced. I, I, I told someone recently I'd searched for years, Brother Tenney and I had searched for years for a book that he had read and he could not remember where he read it. I heard him reference it in a service, and so he and I just started looking for this book. We knew it was out there somewhere, and I, I just thankfully, thankfully someone Someone found it, a friend of mine, and uh, asked me about it. And so I got a copy of the first edition, and it's uh, forward by President Taft. And it was just one of those books, and it talks about a young man and a young lady in the early, those early camp meetings in Kentucky, the cane leading to the Cane Ridge revival, and all of this. The young man and a young woman met at a camp meeting. And suddenly, like, the Spirit of the Lord just started moving. It was like a rifle shot. And they began, uh, the man began to dance. The girl began to dance. Their hands touched as they were dancing in that old sawdust. One week later, wow, Tom Lincoln and Nancy Hanks were married, those two dancers. And, of course, their most famous offspring, Abraham Lincoln. His parents met dancing at an old camp meeting. That was the story Brother Tenney used to tell. We finally found the book. I think it's time to dance, folks. I, 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 I get weary of the weeping in the morning and I just wonder what's happened to our dance? What's happened to our dance? Not surprisingly, by the way, those shakers, they danced and danced and danced. And uh, hundreds of thousands strong, they're known today for their shaker furniture. Of course, they're no longer in existence, but that is another story why they're no longer in existence. Don't have time right now. Yeah. But by the way, they didn't believe in marriage and having children. So that pretty much, they were one generation away from extinction. Oh, but they knew how to dance. Solomon said there's a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. When is the time to dance? I know there's some negative references to dancing in the Bible. Israel dancing before the golden calf was idolatrous, sensual, wrong kind. Or Salome, Herodias' daughter, uh, dancing before Herod that cost John the Baptist his life. Yes, yes, that's the wrong kind of dancing. But surely as there's Tr false prophets, there's true prophets. Oh, my. And as surely as there's a false dancing, there's a true dancing. Because you would not be commanded to praise the Lord in the dance unless there was an acceptable way of doing that. Well, could you hear, Shelly, come on, come on. I, LaWanda, we, we got a question. We got a question, a quiz on daily devotion. You ready? How many of you, come on, hands raised. I don't want bashfulness. I don't want shame. How many of you, when you were a kid, maybe in school, maybe in music class in fifth grade, 
How many of you had to dance the hokey pokey? Hands up. <laughs> Hands up. Hands up if you dated the hokey pokey. Yeah, yeah, this is it. I'm seeing hands up. I'm seeing hands up. AJ Labris is the one that created that song. They, they had a tough time burying him because they put the left hand in. Okay, never mind. I, <laughs> sorry, the hokey fuck. You know, you put your left hand in, you put your left hand out, you put your left hand in, shake it all about. You remember that? But do you remember the last line of that song? <laughs> the last line of that song. You put your whole self in. You put your whole self out. Folks, yeah, square dancing too. I saw that. You, you put your whole self in and you shake it all about. There's just something about putting your whole self in. That's it. That's it. Worship involves all of you. All of you. God desires, I believe, his children to dance. Psalm 150, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Are you with me? Praise him with the timbrel and dance. If you got breath, praise the Lord. You've heard of foot and mouth disease. Well, we sometimes suffer from hand and mouth disease in worship. We will worship God with our mouths. We will sing. We will worship God with our hands. We may clap our hands. We may play instrument, praise him on the instruments. But our feet? Nope. Feet don't feet don't get involved. It was E. E. Cummings, a great American writer, who said, I'd rather learn from a one bird how to sing than to teach ten thousand stars how not to to dance, dancing stars. Yeah, you see this image behind me. When you hold the aperture of a camera open and you point it toward the North Star, the North Star is a relative constant with this Earth. But all of the other stars appear to swirl and move over time. It's a great spiral dance. He said, I'd rather teach one bird, just one bird, how to sing than to teach 10,000 stars how not to dance. Dance. Angels in scripture are likened to stars and I can almost see them. When you see them in heaven, Jacob opened his eyes and saw them somersaulting down golden ladders. An old, an old saying says, dancing is earth's only chance to glimpse the angelic coast. Dance about the hills. Open his eyes that he may see that greater are they that are with us than they that are against us. They may see the chariots of fire. They may see an angels dancing on the hills of glory. Can I just say, let it be done on earth as it is in heaven? Dance. Dance on. Dance on. Can I say without being sacrilegious, God loves dancing and he loves his children to dance? One songwriter said, God respects us when we work, but he loves us when we dance. David, this man after God's own heart, you know, you know this is in the Bible. You know that I'm in the book and it is bothering some of you. It's bothering some of you right now. Some of you that have that hand and foot disease, you, you, you just don't want to move your, move your foot. David, a man after God's own heart, danced with all of his might and Michael, his wife, criticized him and she remained on the balcony of barrenness. I just made that up. The balcony of barrenness. Wow. Because she ridiculed someone dancing. Well, I want to be careful. I want to be careful. When somebody's worshiping the Lord, yes, I want it done decently in order. Yes, I don't want them running over people. Yes, I don't want them... Uh, screaming at the top of their lungs and scaring new converts. Yes, 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 yes to all of that. But oh, I hope you dance. I hope you know how to dance. The flesh doesn't like it. I, I've decided that. The flesh lusts against the spirit. Flesh doesn't want to dance. You may remember the Old Testament story of Micah took 
1,100 shekels of silver or something like that, fashioned an idol, decided this is my God, one that he could worship to with his own specifications at his own convenience. The Lord said for us to praise him not how we desire, but how he desires. The flesh. Sticking with the definition of dancing as movement of any sort. Yes, hear Jane Austen in her classic work, Pride and Prejudice. Every savage can dance. Cicero, that great orator, no sane man will dance. Yeah, nobody. The flesh doesn't like dancing. The artist Monet, nearly two millennia removed from Cicero, responded that no sane man will dance. He said, those who dance are thought to be insane by those who can't hear the music. So I just want to ask you, Deborah, can you hear the music? Can you hear the different drummer? If you hear a different drummer, dreamer, take a chance. The road you choose to travel is the difference in the dance. Mark Twain. Mark Twain once said it. Why don't you work like you don't need the, need the money, love like you've never been hurt, and dance like nobody's watching? Can you hear the music? If you can, you'll dance. I believe Pentecostals. I believe spirit-filled worshipers. We're in danger. Last night, I just thought it was so cool. I thought it's so cool. A lot of the leaders that were there last night when the praise team started praising and, you know, by the way, the worship team's never on trial when they're leading worship. It's the audience that's on trial. Yeah. I watched those leaders. They probably didn't know the words of the song, didn't know anything about it, but they got out in those aisles and started moving. Any movements a dance. Wow. Wow. I, I hope we don't lose the dance. Yes, we're not against, we're, yes, we're against worldly dance. Yes, we're against choreography. Yes, we're against all of that. But, oh boy, Zane Joe, take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. In fact, the best dancers know how to dance when the shackles are still on their feet. It was Charles Parham that visited the Azusa Street Revival to see it firsthand. He was just accosted by the worship. People slain in the spirit, dancing in the spirit, worshiping in the spirit, and he immediately attacked the congregation. But within months, Parham's ministry was over. Be careful before you attack spirit-filled worship. I love what Mark Twain once wrote to an editor who's trying to get him to change what he wrote. He said, it is discouraging to try to penetrate a mind like yours. You ought to get it out and dance on it. Take some of the rigidity out of it. <laughs> I love that. One old religious group called the birth of the church of Pentecost, the birthday of the ecstasy church. Ek meaning out of, stasis meaning standing still. To be Pentecostal is to be ecstatic, meaning you're no longer standing still in yesterday's stale worship. You're launching. Folks, I feel some apostolic aerobics coming on in daily devotion. I'm just feeling that. We're just launching into the power God meant. Don't attack the dance. Yes. Someone said, you're a fool if you dance. You're a fool if you don't. So you might as well dance. <laughs> That's it. You may as well. Within, when in doubt, dance. You got to remind yourself to dance. You got to remind you. You probably remember the story by Margaret Fishback called Footprints. I read, a, I read another version of it recently where a man saw his footprints, God side by side. Suddenly in his dream, he saw the two sets of footprints bisected by marks in the sand, deep grooves and ruts, and the footprints could barely be seen. He cried out, God, was it a fight? The Lord asked, don't you remember? That's when we dance. I wonder if what Jacob called a wrestling match was not God calling dancing with mortal man. In fact, the Hebrew word for wrestle means to kick up dust. So when you feel like you're in a wrestling match with God, don't forget to dance. Don't forget. It's the dance. It's the dance. When the elder brother came in from the field, you remember what he grew resentful of? He grew resentful of the music and the dancing. He, he just, he was resentful. You know how I know when an old time Pentecostal has gone bad, when a church has grown toxic, it's when they get resentful of the music and the dance. Come on, folks. 
We are those who have been in this for a little while. We ought to get out and dance. We ought to know how to lead in worship. When Elisha plowed, awaiting his faithful call in the ministry, I love, I love the name in the Hebrew of the valley where he was plowing. It's Abel Mahola. Isn't that beautiful? Abel Mahola. You know what it means? The meadow of dancing. When you're plowing, don't forget to dance. When you're waiting on God's time, don't forget to dance. When your brother has written a brand new song that everybody's talking about, then like Miriam, pick up a tambourine and dance to it. When others are rejoicing, when in doubt what to do, dance. When your loved ones are mocking you from the balcony of barrenness, you dance with all your heart. When the critics are shouting, dance, dance, dance. We exercise ourselves unto godliness. Dance, dance. Whew. Can I tell you a story? Ah, let me tell you two stories. Let me throw in two stories. First, there was a young lady in our church many, many years ago. A tragedy has happened in her life, had happened in her life. And she was just a child and she had gone out in the backyard and there was a transformer, electrical transformer. And somehow there was a short and it was terrible. It was a horrific accident. But she had laid both hands on that transformer and, the re and by laying both hands, it saved her life because it closed the circuit. But the damage done was horrible. She lost her arms in the deal. Her mother had trained her how what she once could do with her hands to do with her feet. She could open the door. She could eat with a knife and fork. She could roll and comb her hair. She could play the organ. And she did all of it without arms. She came to our church as a young girl and, um, and she pressed on. You could sit at the table and eat with her and not notice that she was using a knife and fork with her feet. She learned to write with her feet. And when she played the organ at church with her feet, I promise you, there was not a dry eye in the house. I guess it's easier to worship God with your feet when you don't have hands. Yeah. Praise him, folks. Praise him in the dance. In the dance. Whew. Second story, maybe you've heard me tell it before. When our church was destroyed in Hurricane Ike, and it was a horrible deal. It was a seven and a half year trial. Destroyed our church. I write about it in the point of low points. Tell you the back story. Every word in that book had to be approved by teams of lawyers when I described it. It was terrible. It was, a, it, was, it was a low point. But in the middle of the night, when they were taking our building apart a square inch at a time, a million dollars to take our building apart, biohazard symbols ev uh, everywhere, air locks, air scrubbers running, I would go into that sanctuary and I would look at the concrete floor where people had written scriptures and written the names of lost loved ones and prodigals and their favorite verses and their dreams, their aspirations. And I would weep until I couldn't weep anymore. But then I made myself every night, I made myself get on my feet. And it wasn't pretty, but remember all movement is a dance. And I would dance across that building like David did at Ziklag. And I would shout these words, not always, not always. It's not always going to be like this. It's not always going to be like that. There's a time to mourn, but there's a time to dance. And if you're in doubt which to do, dance. Dance with all of your heart before the Lord. Because God's here. And I just think, you can weep without faith. Oh, you hear me. Vicki Estella, you can weep without faith without faith, 
but you can't dance without faith. It is ultimately saying, I believe my Redeemer lives. I believe I'm still standing. And as long as I'm standing, I'm going to praise Him. I'm going to praise Him in the dance. Oh, praise God. Just felt that on my heart today. Don't know why. Maybe this will help you get through today. When in doubt, you don't know what to do. Find yourself a place to dance before the Lord with all of your heart people after God's own heart do that. And I believe this is our destiny, this is our heritage, and this is our legacy that we're going to share with this generation dance. Wow. Can you feel the presence of the Lord in this? I know he's here. I, I If you're driving right now, would you let one of your feet just start patting, maybe not the one on the accelerator? If you're sitting still, you said, I can't move, just let those feet just begin to move a little and see what God is going to do for you. What a great day on Daily Devotion. Would you share this with someone? Please do that. 835 of you on right now. Share this with someone. Share this with someone. Lighten their day. Help them on life's journey. That's it. That's it. You can't dance without faith. You can fight without faith. You can weep without faith. You can argue without faith, but you can't dance without faith. When in doubt, dance. Faith pleases God. Facebookers, like and follow. YouTube, subscribe. Get the word out. Go check out KenGurley.com. Get ready to go over to KYCC.com in 15 minutes. You can join us there. May the Lord be with you. Look forward to seeing you again. Manana. God bless. Thank you for sharing in daily devotion with Ken Gurley. We pray this ministry has been a source of encouragement and strength to you. Please be mindful that your financial support enables us to meet with you each day. To give a donation or connect with us, visit our website at kengurley.com. There you will also find the latest books, podcasts, and resources. Blessed 90 Days to Change Your World is Pastor Gurley's latest book. You can get your copy of this life-changing book at kengurley.com. May God's favor rest on you in every way until we meet again.